as someone who has run companies, owned mm. companies, worked for yourself, worked for other people, ridden horses, and all the other weird stuff. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit about mm. skill gaps or mm. knowledge gaps that you feel that you've experienced when people join mm. a company, work for you, that you've employed or worked with, mm. where they come from a predominantly finance background or accounting background and then move into a commerce role, corporate role, yeah. when they think, oh, I'm a qualified accountant yeah. so I'm I can go and be financial director mm. tomorrow I can go and yeah. be CFO tomorrow what's missing the ability to plan towards goals and then create a project plan right. and work towards that um you know to develop a project plan because in auditing and in an accounting practice you have a tick the box approach right yeah. you have some fa- software or last year's order file that lays out the budget the plan and I've noticed that chartered accountants are generally very poor at project management. Yeah. yeah. Especially if they have to report externally on that. So that's that's a skill set that I would love to see added to the qualification. Um, or, you know, a lot of CAs are looking at what do they do after they're a yeah. CA. Yeah. You know, what can they add on to their qual? And a lot of them go down, well, we'll add more finance. Right. Um, we'll do a CFA or a yeah, CMA. Yeah. But as a young chartered accountant, if you're looking to get into business, um, I'd say the first thing to do is go and do a project management qualification, especially in the agile methodology, right? Um, Because you don't know how to project manage, right? It's it's been something I've wrestled with. I've been terrible at project management. Well, I think we think we are, though. Like, let's be honest. We we think we, you know, and coming out of... If you're in a classic audit environment, your each audit is a project and you yeah. are, depending on what level you leave your articles at and where you were, you manage that project. You know, you, yeah. you know the deadlines, the dates, and so I think a lot of I think a lot of us and a lot of accountants or, or people mm. coming out of, of audit feel that they do have yeah. project management experience. You know, that, that you would put that on your CV that yeah. I have managed projects because an audit is yeah. a project. So what's the difference? So the difference is in that audit, all your goals, milestones, the planning are all pre-given to you. The shell is there. The shell is there. You don't have to say, here's the goal and now I must go and develop a plan. Or worse yet, the I have is, to create the goal. Yeah, well, then we start going into the entrepreneur side and the C-suite the right? side. Yeah. But in your first role, you're not going to be doing that. You're going no. to be given a goal. And CAs are very good at delivering on tasks, right? But not good at creating the plan to achieve goals. Because when you've done an audit, every audit follows a similar process. You know, the standards tell you well, as well. Process, there's an order yeah, process, right? Um, now, if there's no process, I find most most of the new CAs I've worked with just go into a flat, a spiral. They, they, they don't know how to develop that. And project management is quite a scientific thing to do and has advanced a lot over the years. I've been studying it over the last four years to try and fulfill my own weakness in that space. The second thing is, as CA, a lot of people want to move up. And I think it's important at this point, is you'll get to some point where you'll, you'll have a choice. Either you're going to be a specialist. Yeah. You know, so I used to be a corporate finance specialist. Yeah. Did not manage people, right? Yeah. I was supposed to be the smartest person in the room about structuring a deal. That was it. Or an IFRA specialist or yeah. whatever. But if you want to move up to, you know, to an FD or a CFO level, or moving out into ops management at any C level or yeah. any senior management level, you're gonna to have to learn to lead. Yeah. Um, you know, the rules and policies do not set culture, you know. No. And the human psyche is something that all of us can learn, whether you're a CA or whether you're an MBA, that is a human skill we have to learn. And that's a lifetime of learning and reading yeah. and the only thing I've learned so far is to listen yeah. um, and to make sure that you don't try and solve people's problems for them. And the CAs, we all got that. We give advice very quickly. Yeah. We're very arrogant. We want we, to solve problems. We want to solve your problems because yeah. we're smarter than you and we don't have time to wait for you to solve it yourself. So 
we can be sometimes quite harsh on that. And I think the learning on how to deal with people to slow down, and this is something I've learned from you a lot, is in our, in our businesses that we run, is to slow down, to listen more, and to create a good space for people yeah. to grow and find their own inspiration. Um, yeah. It's really easy to forget that a business is nothing other than a group of people. Yeah. You don't, you know, you don't deal with a company, you deal with people. Business is more than you numbers. Know, right? Yeah, your team is, is yeah. a bunch of people, different people, their own stresses, mm. uh, dramas, relationships, breakups, happy, not happy, yeah. uh, whatever. They, you know, whatever's going on at home impacts them just as much as you're a human yeah. being. So I think as CAs or as professionals, we, we're very quick to understand or, or try and focus on the technical impact mm. of stuff technical solutions because we want to help solve a problem. You know, we want to fix yeah. it and make it better and be more effective, process, whatever, whatever. But don't imagine that you're going to be successful without taking into account mm. that there's a human being on the other side of the table yeah. who doesn't necessarily understand what you do, especially not if you're qualified and they're not. Mm. You know, it, the person on the other side of the table doesn't know what you know. Yeah. They don't understand why you're saying the things you are. They don't understand why you're asking for things that you may be asking for. That's yeah. one of the things we learn as, you know, when you do articles. Yeah, exactly. Be careful when you ask your client for stuff because yeah. your client thinks that you're there to find fraud. Yeah. They can't get over the fact that you're there to find fraud. And you're not there to find fraud, but they don't understand yeah. that. So when you ask, why is this like this, they feel yeah. attacked and exactly. defensive. So you do learn people's skills yeah. and articles because you learn how to get information from people mm. who don't understand what you want, don't know why, you grudge anyway, they don't like you, mm. really shove you in a corner somewhere with no aircon. <laughs> um, so there are people's Throw skills. Throw food at you once there, yeah. Throw, well, really? You got food thrown at you? Well, someone had to. Nobody threw food at me. <laughs> yeah, we ordered a, ordered a food company, so... Oh. Clearly, okay. I did the wrong order because mm. I had to bring my own food. <laughs> I think you learn certain skills in negotiation and dealing with difficult clients. Yes. That actually gives you such an advantage. But growing um, people for long term, yeah. kind of maximum human capital, yeah. is something that most people who come out of an accounting background. Yeah. And an auditing firm don't know because what what happens in accounting firms? Every you no, know, someone's there for two, three years, and then they move out. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, I have seen a change in that, um, and different countries are different as well. But but there's a difference between supervising someone and managing and leading and leading. Yeah, and I think we kind of get that mixed up because at audit firms, when you're a second year and third year, and then you do supervise yeah. and instruct and direct but that's not the same as having someone work for you work in your mm. department where you have to manage them yeah. grow them discuss with them um so i think we also misunderstand as you know as as mm. coming from auditing we use terminology i'm an audit manager and yeah. I, you know i manage that's not the same really as managing people or managing a team well it's, it's i think the the difference is if i if i especially in larger corporates there's this middle management layer right which is all about the majority of that is just what i would talk about as management rather than leadership and right. management is yeah. making sure that people below you meet tasks conform to policies and you know you you as a, your division you deliver the tasks that are given happy. to you. But not even effective and happy. I think that's you know, managing, you get that done. And some people are very effective on fear-based management. Some are very effective in other styles, right? Um, okay, so project management skills and leadership skills, I think, a nice summary for... for yeah, I think those two are the... Yeah. So when, when you're moving, it's not to say that we underestimate the value of the finance skills and the accounting skills and you know all the many hours that mm. that you put in in order to qualify it's not that we undervalue that all we're saying is that 
we need to be careful that we don't feel that because we've got a professional qualification, mm. we know everything and have all the skills and yeah. can go straight from being an audit manager to a CFO. I think it's the same for any profession that moves into general business. So you're a doctor, you move into um, hospital management. Yeah. You don't know the first thing about finances, right? You don't yeah. know the first thing about IT. You don't know the first thing about people policies. Yeah. So you have to go learn that, even though you're the most marketing. qualified person. Yeah. But we've got to understand that we know one aspect yeah. very well. 